Hi everybody, Jillian here. Welcome back to my channel for a new Bible journaling process video. Today I am going to be in 1 Kings chapter 9 and 11, and I just wanted to quickly show you some things that I'm going to be using, and then I'll go ahead and put you on fast forward and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is use the paint card technique to get some of the paints, this color, onto my page. And I'm just using an old AAA card here to use that. I also have some washi tape that I pulled. Um, I may or may not use this, but just really liked the colors that they bring in. I have the Homespun Alpha stamps here. And then I also have the Elements stamp in case I want to add some texture or pattern around the page. I've got the Word Fetty stickers in white and black, and then the Say It stickers in black and white. And I like using these as a finishing touch just to kind of um, summarize what this entry is saying to me. And then lastly, I have these paper clips from the Flea Market Fancy Collection, which is available at Hobby Lobby. I like getting these when they're like 40 or 50% off. And then I think today I'm going to use the question mark paper clip because I'm going to pose a question to myself in my Bible journaling and I'll just probably stick it on the top or someplace. So that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and put you on fast forward and get started. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put the Bible mat underneath the page that I'm working on so that I can protect the rest of my Bible. And I'm very happy to report that I ended up journaling this entry on the correct page. The page that has the verse on it, if you've watched my channel at all, you'll know that this is a tiny victory for me because I have journaled entries on the opposite page where I meant to at least twice before, so I'm pleased to report that. I haven't done this technique in a while, so I was a little timid when I started, but then I just ended up putting color down everywhere, so I really wanted to focus on these three colors, and then I'm going to go back in and add a little more. Now, I'm keeping everything up in the top right, and you'll see me eventually move it down to like the bottom left, bottom middle of the page, just to provide a little more interest down at the bottom. So I'm in First Kings today, and this is actually a lesson that I taught in my Sunday School class this past Sunday morning, and... I ended up taking away something different from what the lesson plan was telling me to teach. It ended up talking about obedience, but I took something different away from it. So we started off in 1 Kings chapter 9, and uh, the title of this section says, The Lord Appears to Solomon. God is talking to Solomon, appearing to him again after already having done it and giving him the wisdom that he asked for. And God says to Solomon here in chapter 9, verse 4, As for you, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David your father when I said you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. But if you or your descendants turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off from Israel the land I have given them and will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. So fast forward to chapter 11 in 1 Kings and Solomon's getting older and in chapter 11 verse 3 it says he had, Solomon, had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. So it goes on to talk about the different high places he had set up, uh, different poles and things like that he had built to worship these false gods that his wives had uh had led him astray with. And so what I took away from this Sunday school lesson, and I definitely wanted to journal it in my Bible, was what kind of influence do I allow in my life? I talked to my girls about, you know, making sure that they have appropriate friends that are good influences, that they're listening to quality music, quality television or Netflix or whatever they're watching. And then it also makes me wonder what kind of influences am I allowing in my life? So am I waking up to check Instagram first thing in the morning before I offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God. Um, what kind of music am I listening to? What am I watching on television? Uh, honestly, it's only been bubble guppies for the last year, but <laughs> I really need to be careful of what influence I'm allowing in my life. I've noticed about myself a while ago, actually, that I kind of have this chameleon tendency to emulate people that I'm around a lot or that I see on YouTube even. And so I really need to be careful of what I'm allowing my eyes to see, allowing my ears to hear, to make sure that I don't then subconsciously start emulating the wrong thing. So knowing that about myself, I really wanted to pose this question to myself, what kind of influence am I allowing in my life? And so I'm just journaling here. 
Uh, it says, I want to be mindful of the influences I allow in my life, Lord, always guarding my heart. In Proverbs, it tells us to guard our heart, for from it flows everything. So just something I want to put in my Bible, have it be bright and bold to catch my attention as I'm flipping through the Old Testament, and just have it be a great reminder. I use the homespun alphas to stamp out the word influence, and then I want something on the bottom of the page, and so I have the bright and brave die cut pieces or paper pieces from the bright and brave collection, and I'm looking for something to put along the bottom. I ended up tearing the page up at the top because I had so much paint up there, so that led me to put the black and white striped washi tape up top, and it's really not a big deal. You can't even tell that the page is torn, and I wanted to repeat that and put it at the bottom. So now there's just like this weird blob of paint <laughs> sitting at the bottom, and I use some of those element stamps to add a little bit of interest around the page, and so now I'm just putting a thicker piece of washi down, this die cut arrow, and then I'm going to layer some other things around it. So here is this pink cross washi tape from Illustrated Faith and I'm going to layer that underneath it. Everything is pretty removable. I use the Elmer's Dot Runner adhesive and washi tape which is pretty forgiving so if you need to lift it from the page you're able to do that easily. To provide a little more definition on the bottom because it was looking very white, I took my Illustrated Faith journaling pen and outlined around the die cut arrow. Okay, so something really funny that happened. Uh, I finished this page and went ahead and, and took photographs of it and everything. And then I realized as I was beginning to edit the video that I totally forgot to use these things that I had originally pulled out. So I'm going to look through these uh, through these stickers and see if there's anything else I want to add and then add my paper clip to the top. I end up taking the sticker that says whatever is lovely, remembering that Philippians 4 tells us to focus on a list of things. And then it brought a lot more white down to the bottom and I wanted to balance that up at the top. So I'm putting the exclamation point paper clip here. I decided not to go with a question mark. And I'm going to layer the stickers. I ended up choosing the black ones that say seek him and layering them at the top. And that's it. Here's a look at my finished page along with a few close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to tune in next Wednesday for a new Bible journaling process video and I'll see you then.